Tonight on Sports Scene, we take a look at Tunisia's record-breaking streak of qualifying to 15 consecutive Africa Cup of Nations finals. Also on the show is the story of how a historic win for South Sudan's national football team over Uganda is a sign of better things to come. Hello, welcome to your weekly sports program that brings you all the sporting news and reviews from an African perspective. We will highlight the thrill of victory while also showing you the agony of defeat. I'm Richard and Ty Nairobi. This is Sports Scene. Let's get real. Let's get live. Let's get started. Here's what's coming up in the show. Also on the show, we look back at Egypt's glorious football achievements in 2020 and what to expect in the new year. And we take a look at drafts, a popular board game helping Ghanaians to escape their daily hassles. Hello and welcome to Sports Scene. Let's kick off with football. Tunisia will be going to the Africa Cup of Nations finals for a record extending 15th consecutive time after drawing one all with Tanzania and Dar es Salaam. Both Mali and Tunisia are also assured of winning their four nation groups, but both are certain of qualification even if they both lose their remaining matches. Here's CGTN's Adnan Shawashi with more. Head coach Munder Lekbayer is hopeful that the Tunisian football team will achieve positive results in the upcoming matches. We've secured qualifications after four matches. It's important because only four teams over 50 have qualified early. Tunisia, Senegal, Algeria and Mali are lucky. We've realized our first objective. The most important thing is to win convince and improve our level in the next matches in order to reach the finals. Former captain and 2004 Afghan champion Karim Haggi says the Tunisian team's game on the pitch has not improved since the Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt two years ago. The effort is considerable for the past 15 editions of AFCON. It's the result of group work by the technical team, football federation and the players. However, qualifying is not enough because the performance is always average. Yes, we won the matches without pressure, but the national team's game was questionable. It has not improved since the last edition of AFCON. Former national team centre-back Walid Hishri is optimistic about the outcome of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations qualification in Cameroon. The 15th consecutive qualification is a source of pride for any player or team member. It is a historic moment despite the global health crisis. Now we must focus on winning a new title rather than just playing AFCON. According to the Tunisian Football Federation, at least six new players will join the squad in the next three months. The exceptional performance of the Tunisian football team is the result of the sacrifice of many generations of players, coaches and technical staff who have dedicated their career to football. Tunisia aims to win the upcoming Afghan and set a new record. Adnan Shawishi, CGTN, Tunis. South Sudan's national men's football team coach says his team has the potential to become one of the best teams in Africa. The football team beat Uganda in November 2020 in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers and hopes are high for South Sudan's rising stars, as CGTN's Patrick Oyet now reports. South Sudan's national football team has registered its first win in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers against Uganda. The match was played in November 2020 in Nairobi, Kenya. The team's coach says given the right investment in football in South Sudan, the team is capable of becoming one of the best on the continent. We got young players that we just picked from, uh, from the local league and you could see them competing against top professionals and giving their best, playing with all their heart. You see, that already I feel, I feel that joy, that success. Uh, uh, in Currently, South Sudan plays its home games in Khartoum or Nairobi. That's because the only international stadium in the capital, Juba, is under renovation. 
The Juba National Stadium is being upgraded using money from the FIFA Forward Program. FIFA has given $5 million for the project. Upon completion, the stadium will be a 7,000-seat facility capable of hosting international matches, but there have been significant delays to the work on the stadium. The project was scheduled for completion in April 2020. South Sudan's government says the delay is due to the pandemic and the complicated logistics of transferring the money from FIFA. It is asking the public to be patient so that the stadium, once completed, meets international standards. According to, to preliminary uh, in, uh, committee report that I got from the expertise and technocrats is that this stadium would last for long because it is now based on a concrete uh, building. The national football coach says playing home matches in Juba would really help the team. I will be over the moon when we, when we start playing our home games uh, here in Juba and when we'll be able to have uh, thousands of one of our fans uh, flocking in to support us. I think that that will be a big, a big boost uh, for the team. South Sudan's domestic league remains suspended due to COVID-19, but the government has designated one vice president to oversee sports development in the country. Patrick Koyet, CGTN, Juba, South Sudan. Schools in Kenya were shut as one of the measures to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, leaving millions of children with a lot of free time for months in 2020. A newly established football program in Kwale County in the country's coastal region went a long way to keep kids engaged when learning stopped. CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar has more. Santke Nyale is a high school teacher based in Kwale, a county in the Kenyan coast south of Mombasa City. He is also an ardent football lover. With learning suspended from March to November 2020 when partial reopening of schools was permitted, Santke decided to start a football training program. It was established to keep hundreds of youths in the area occupied. This group of players are um, young players in the first place. They come from uh, different neighborhoods which have limits. And I believe as an educationist, I'm a teacher, uh, the difference is we, we give them a conducive environment for them to develop uh, holistically, that is de developing mentally, leave alone them developing physically as players. I joined the team because out there, there are so many temptations and schools being closed for a whole year means there was so much idleness. But the coach told us that we can still continue learning through football on the pitch. In June 2020, Nyale started the Goal to Goal Foundation, a program that would provide a safe haven for young boys in his community. One of the main objectives is to use football as a tool to keep youth in school and free from social vices. I have learned a lot about unity and love for each other. I have also gained so much from the coach. He has made me appreciate my talent. He also reminds us that we are still students and that we have to balance education and sport. Our seniors who have gone back to school received book donations and the coach has promised we will also get the books when our schools reopen. Majority of the players come from low-income families and face various challenges. Nyale hopes that with each day of training and playing together, his group will adapt positive values that will tap into their talent and turn them into future model citizens. I really hope that they can understand that they, are, they can also break their limits. They can have that spirit of winning despite that they are coming from a background that has a lot of limitations, those which are visible and others which are actually invisible. Football is more than just a game. It teaches lessons that players carry with them in life, from teamwork, discipline, perseverance, and even how you handle success and react from failure. These are just by the qualities Goal to Goal Foundation hopes its players will be able to carry beyond the pitch. Mohamed Abubakar for CGTN, Kwale, Kenya. All right, time now for a short break. Don't go away. Here's a look at what's ahead.
We look back at Egypt's glorious football achievements in 2020 and what to expect in the new year. The greatest journeys, the greatest sights, the greatest adventures. Here in Panater, this weir allows the locals to walk on water. We're far more than just TV news. We're your passport to the wonders of Africa. To bring you stories of struggle, survival and hope. Ah. So let's explore. CGTN. See the difference. How would you create your legend? On the fields. On the tracks. In the arenas of Africa. Were you born to be a player? Could this moment be yours? Sports scene. Fine. Welcome back. 2020 was a year full of achievements for Egyptian football. It saw the first Cairo Derby in the CAF Champions League finals. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic deprived fans from attending these glorious football moments. Here is CGTN's Adel Al Marui with more. To most of the world, 2020 has been a tough year. For Egyptian football, it's been one of the best years yet. Cheers from Egypt's victory in the 2019 Under-23 Africa Cup of Nations in November extended to 2020. By February, Zamalek brought Egypt its 10th CAF Super Cup title, only to make it to the Champions League final by the end of the year. And its challenger for the title was no other club but its Cairo rival Al-Ahli. Zamalek was the CSUP outstanding team in 2020. They won the African Super Cup and have reached the Champions League final. That's something new for the club. Al Ali, on the contrary, is more used to such accomplishments. This awakening in Egyptian football has reached the senior national team. It started 2020 at the bottom of Group G in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. The year ends with it on top. It's a successful year for Egyptian football. My only reservation is that these successes came by chance. There is no planning. I wish to see the EFA build upon the under-23 team success to infuse its talent with the final team. That didn't happen. We had good individual talents and coaching staff that managed to bring the best out of them. But there is no vision for the future of in football. I wish next year would work on planning. Egypt enters 2021 with new challenges. COVID-19 has infected its players, including Liverpool's top player Mohamed Salah, and the young pharaohs must get in shape ahead of the Tokyo Olympics. The new year is promising a more exciting football journey for Egypt. Al Ahli will be playing in the Club World Cup, and the Egyptian national team will continue pursuing their tickets for Cameroon and for the World Cup in Qatar. Adel Mahroui, CGTN, Cairo. Over in South Africa, young footballers from Asia, a town just outside Johannesburg, had the opportunity to impress football coaches from the UK in a four-hour talent ID clinic. The clinic saw just over a hundred kids showcase their skills for coaches from the International Soccer Academy and the West Ham Foundation. Here's CGTN's with the report. Always, always going towards my left. Then I'm gonna take my South Africa has many aspiring young footballers, and many of them, if not all of them, want to make it as a professional. But sadly, due to a lack of support for grassroots level development, a lot of the wannabe Cristiano Ronaldos end up missing out. That could well be a thing of the past, as English Premier League clubs like West Ham send academy coaches to uplift, impart knowledge and scout for budding stars. I'm always surprised. I, I never come with judgments. 
And um, some of the kids have really shown me that, you know what, they, they have promising um, careers ahead of them. Others, it's, well, it's, you can tell at the beginning of their journey and the fact that they can show improvements in 10 minutes is hopeful. And we're now hoping that they can make it in 10 years time that they actually, you know what, it's still in the game, whether it's as a paid player or just as an adult enjoying the football. I think for the community, today is very special. Uh, I think it's going to give, uh, you know, uh, there's a, it's a safety net also. It's getting the kids off the street and things like that. It's something that we are fighting, you know, to, to get them into something that is constructive. The importance of grassroots level development cannot be emphasised enough. And with an abundance of talent occupying football fields all over South Africa, like the one at Alpha Primary, programmes like the one between MM Stars and West Ham's Foundation are key to nurturing that exciting potential. Grassroots is fundamental because where we work in the academy and um, in the elites here in, in the UK, you don't get those players from nowhere. They don't, they're not just born great, so they have to have that development process where they go through as children, and that's fundamentally where, where grassroots football is, um, the bedrock of creating that, that talent. Most of the PSL teams don't have time for this. They, will, they don't have the patience and time to develop players. They just want, because it's a business, they expect they need players just that's ready. So we don't give enough time and effort to these grassroots children and I think that's where we fall short. The more exposure to top level coaching, the better. And for nine year old Manchester United supporter Siham Gina, this is the first step in her dream of playing professionally for club and country. My brother used to play soccer and I used to go with him for training and I used to see how he played so I thought I would take a try. Some boys are stronger and more faster than me but I think that would be more challenge for me to get my dream. Football at grassroots level is in desperate need of coaching initiatives like this one. Getting the fundamentals right is the foundation to developing future stars and to have experts from the best leagues in the world share their knowledge can only bode well for the next generation of Bafana Bafana and Banyana Banyana players. CS Duplessy, CGTN, Johannesburg. In Cameroon, Kareen Atezenbong Fomo, the only female referee to officiate in the Men's Division I Football League, has been shortlisted for the upcoming 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. Here is CGTN's Mohamed Abubakar once again with her story. Kareen Atezenbong Fomo is a certified physical education and sports teacher in Cameroon. In 2009, she started to officiate in the Women's Football League, where she spent three years. Ambitious and determined, Karin decided to join the Men's League in 2012. I started officiating in the lower women's division. Then in 2010, I was promoted to the first division for women. Two years later, I officiated my first men's match in League Two. In 2014, given my good performance on the pitch, I was promoted again and since then, I've been officiating the men's League One football matches. Despite the women's game having the same number of players and playing time duration, for Karine, officiating the men's game feels a bit different. It is the intensity and commitment that led me to want to referee men's matches. This is the only difference between men's and women's football. In women's football, there is much more finesse and the rhythm is less sustained than in men's football. Karine Fomo has officiated many international matches. She was at the African Games in Brazzaville in 2015 and the African Women Cup of Nations in Cameroon in 2016. Of all the matches she has officiated in her career, one remains special for her. The international competitions I have participated in are a great pride for me. All the matches I have officiated since 2009 have gone very well. But the final of the Cameroon Cup in 2015 moved me a lot and will remain engraved in my memory. That day, President Paul Beer was in the stands of the stadium. For me, to lead a march in the presence of the President of the Republic remains a special and unforgettable moment. Ahead of the 2023 Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, FIFA has selected nine women referees on the African continent, and among them is Karine Fomo. The good news, however, unfortunately coincided with the death of her father. 
I was in a very difficult period when I received the invitation letter from FIFA. I had just lost my father. It is thanks to my father that I am at this level today. But I must admit that it was a pleasure to be among the referees pre-selected by FIFA. It's a satisfaction and it shows the good work I do on the field. Karin will soon take part along with the other shortlisted candidates in the Road to Australia New Zealand project, which will select the best referees for the next Women's FIFA World Cup. Mohamed Abubakar, CGTN. The action continues on sports scene. Lots more ahead to come for you. Here's a peek at what's coming up. Well, coming up, we take a look at drafts, a popular board game helping Ghanaians escape their daily hassles. Welcome back. In Ghana, the board game drafts is one of the popular pastimes for men. It's not just a game to display their wit and strategy. Many say it also helps improve their mood and allows them to better deal with daily life. Here's CGTN's Nabil Ahmed Rofai with more. Drafts is played by two players on opposite sides of the game board. Each player competes to take over the chips of his opponent and wins by capturing more pieces than the other player. But for many, it's more than just that. Draft game, no? The droughts game sharpens our minds. It helps us think on our feet when we face problems in life. Wow. Theophilos Ayukwe says it's an escape from the daily hustle of life. And players say it not only passes the time, it also helps strengthen friendships. It brings us together. We get to meet ourselves as people and uh, organize ourselves. And we, we love ourselves, we respect each other. Over here, there's nothing like, you know, we respect each other. So it has a lot of advantages. More than 200 men, both young and old, are part of the Butchie Drafts Club. They come here to play the game every day. Strategic thinking, concentration, and the ability to read others are the key skills needed to become a great drafts player. But some say the younger generation don't have the patience and focus to master this leisure sports. Those who organize the playing of the drafts in communities say they are working to whip up interest among young people. At the national level, we've started to organize it, called GADA, Ghana Drafts Association. Uh, it hasn't worked to expectation. We are hoping that We'll, they will come around, we'll be able to organize ourselves and have national league, just as we have football league. While drafts continue to gain popularity in Ghana, players here want to sharpen their skills so they can outwit each other any time they play the game. Nabil Ahmed Rufai, CGTN, Accra, Ghana. Culture and sports are intertwined and that's part of the reason for the appreciation of traditional sports in many countries across the world. Some of these sports are not as popular as, say, football, but still have diehard fans who are keeping traditions alive. Bird singing is one such traditional sport in Nigeria. It's certainly not very prominent, but nonetheless, it has its own fan base. CGTN's Deji Badmas tells us more about this sport. Preparing their birds for competition. After the preparation comes the actual engagement. African yellow canary is the best known for their singing ability, and they are mostly found in northern Nigeria. It may look strange to watch the birds sing, but what is actually going on here is a sports competition. The singing bird itself has been in existence for decades. At the initial stage, it was more about enjoying the sounds made by the birds, but as time went on, people started to pick up lyrics in the chirping and found a way to make them compete which is exactly what's happening here. 
The birds sing and the experts point out the sound which is professionally referred to as draws. A draw is a crack that is being made by any human bird. We bring the birds closer to each other. So we bring the bird closer to bird B. They stay side by side, but you don't let them touch, you don't let the cage touch each other. So they, you give them a space. Then there will be somebody here counting the draws while there is another person counting the other bird's draw. For the referees, it takes years of experience to be able to recognize the sound. The first bird to attend 100 draws is declared the winner. It's not everything that you can really make that counts. So that particular chaps and cracks is what they count. So the basic thing is the first 200. So we start counting, first 200, and if the two birds stop before they get 200, we look after three minutes. If there is no sound from each, we stop the game there. Two, three, four. The birds are usually guided to produce the sound they make. They're either bought young or kept in a separate cage beside a bigger bird to imitate the sound from the canary or taught with recorded sounds on MP3 players. Some people who have devoted their interest in it depend on the training and sales of birds for their welfare. People train birds. Not that you just pick the birds from the bush. They train them. They buy other birds to train the yellow canaries. And those birds are expensive. They will buy um, young canaries, train for like one year, at times two years, and they will sell at higher rates. Singing bird is on the traditional sports in Nigeria. The competition is held annually with the target of attracting more players, especially youths, into the sports. The promoters believe government support will make a difference for the advancement of the sport in the country. Anytime the competition is being held, you see both people from basketball, they come, as come, they come to watch the game. We expect the government to finance and boost the competition. Because most of the time when this competition is being held, it is being carried out by, 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 it is being carried out by private entrepreneurs. So we want the government to come in. Currently, the sport has been played in about four states in Nigeria. The players are now pushing to expand it to all the states before making a push for the continent. Dejibadmos, CGTN, Lagos, Nigeria. How about that remarkable story? It's time to, to end sports scene on that high note. Remember, you can send us your feedback to the contacts on the screen and follow us on digital media platforms. Thanks for watching. We leave you with highlights from the just concluded Wing Foil World Tour event of 2020 held in Tarifa, Spain this week.